fucking hands come from? What's up, everybody? If you didn't know, this is Bonfire Debates, our whole eighth episode. Oh, no, in total. Oh. Yeah. Don't count. Besides me is my electric wife. The reflex was there. <laughs> Uh, I love you. Uh, Sian is her name. <laughs> and above us is the lagoon creature Baron Slano, <laughs> who's in bed <laughs> perpetually forever. <laughs> and beside him. I'm not getting Looks so chill. What? You, you are look dis- so chill. You are disconnected. Am I reconnected? Yeah, someone unplugged your algae cable. Your <laughs> algae cable. Algae. <laughs> All right, and then it, but beside him is our residential Irishman, Wade Paddy. Where did all these fucking hands come from? <laughs> you summoned them. You never actually summoned them. <laughs> I keep pointing ants on me. It's like. I, have an S. I can't like, be like, on you, Byron. I'm like fucking 60 kilometers away. <laughs> I don't know what that is in miles. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. uh, Who fucking cares? That, that's, that's actually a horrible image if you think about it. Byron just covered in ants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Please, I want, I want some fan art of Byron and myself. Covering each other. <laughs> oh, what's this one meme? Me. When this is like, um, have you seen I just thought of one for myself. Like, then, uh, when you take too long to get a towel, and this is, um, she's just got like little tiny plastic babies. <laughs> <laughs> or, or like in the, in the one South Park series where there was all that fan art of, who was it, Tweak and Clyde? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's barred myself. <laughs> uh, anyway, so oh, Wade, yeah. Wade and Sian heard about our topic from last week about underrated comic book characters, which I only after editing the video realized that I never explained who the fuck uh, John Constantine is. Because Barnes side trailed that fucking whole conversation about if he's well known or not, and if the TV series was good or not. <laughs> so that's how it all goes. <laughs> yeah, so so we'll we I think, index. Yeah, so I think we'll revisit this well. Oh right, sure, I start. Alright. So for those who don't know, John Constantine is first and foremost a dick. <laughs> That's and weird. a Welshman. Isn't he a Welshman? Well, I mean, I wouldn't say it's fair to say that all Welsh people are dicks, Barron. <laughs> I didn't say that. I said, yes, you and did. I said first and foremost he's a dick, and you're like, ah, Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> that checks out. <laughs> uh, no, I think he's just British. I think he's like English. High tea. The Queen's tea. <laughs> uh, yeah, but so he doesn't have any superpowers specifically, but he is a really powerful wizard, which sounds so wrong to say. He's a warlock. Yeah, it sounds so wrong. Like, if you know his personality, it just that sounds so nerdy. But, uh, yeah, he's like, yeah, but yeah, so he's his his power is magic based. He doesn't have any superpowers. He has magic spells and wit that he uses and scathing sarcasm <laughs> as a superpower. <laughs> like piss off any deity yeah. that he comes across. And uh, so. Constantine would probably do absolutely anything to save himself. But most of the time, it ends up saving the world as well. But he's not... He's the type of character 
that if people make deals with Crossroads demons, yeah, he's worse than those demons. Like they would, if 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 you're making a deal with Constantine, you're gonna get fucked <laughs> at some point. Expert tactician and manipulator. Yes, that is true. Martyrs, con artists, and skilled detectives. Resistance to telepathy. Uh, decelerated aging. Expert hand to hand combat. Yeah. In some more, versions. Yeah. <laughs> Extensive knowledge of the occult. Expert magic. Expert user of magic. So, yeah, constantly check them out on Comic Chronology. You can buy comic books there and read them on your phone. Again, we're not sponsored by them, but Amazon, we won't say no. What about you, Boots? Okay, bearing in mind, I've literally had like two seconds to try and find something because <laughs> I wasn't aware we were traveling back in time. So, I like first search came across Midnighter. Which, okay. hold on, I want to read the first app, the first thing it fuck gave me. Sorry, y'all. Uh, well, do you want to wait to go while you do some more? No, no, no. Okay, alright, I'm sorry. Gianna, what are you miss learning? Okay, wait, go. All right, wait, go. One, two, three, go. Go ahead. One, two, three, go. Hold on while I just prepare myself. Uh, All right, okay. Everyone's preparing themselves. I'm prepared. Sort of. Yeah, I'm, th I'm thirsty. What is happening? Sorry. Ugh. Yeah, it's pretty glasses. <laughs> I got All right, these, and they're pretty cool, so... I just see a bunch of pixels the now. So then, Wade, you look pretty blind as well. <laughs> I am. I am very blind, Dalen. I'm not Dalen, but okay. <laughs> That's how blind I am. <laughs> uh, no, it's not you're, not, you're, you're as lost as Zora. Alright. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm very, very, very... I'm oh, sorry, Anthony. That's an anime joke. I did not hear what you said. It was just... Uh, 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 pixels. Pixels. Yeah, can you... Shitty internet. Yeah, welcome to South Africa. Okay, go, bro. Okay, Yeah, the internet's... Okay. Even mine is up and down, up and down. <laughs> you are so rude! Uh. I think it's just delayed. I don't think he means to be rude. <laughs> so, you love me, you know. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I found Midnighter. And on the page thingy I found it, it says, Did you find Zack Snyder's Batman too violent? Wait till you meet Midnighter. A member of the rogue superhero team, the Authority, Midnighter is a true representation of a violent and a bit Superpowered Batman. So that sounds fucking dope. Then it says Midnight has openly gay with her partner Apollo. Bless you. The lack of LGBTQ representation can be easily filled with the Midnight, uh, a dark, grisly R rated DCEU movie. Cool. Extremely violent. Yes. The Midnight possesses superhuman speed, strength, and agility. His regenerative powers are quite legendary to sense. Um, he can easily recover from bullet wounds and fractured bones within days. He's also immune to the mental attacks to the extent that he could Sorry. block just... DC's most powerful tele... tele... telepath. Yeah, so he's... Because was... it sounded like he's immune to simps. <laughs> simps. Ah. Yes, you said simps. The ultimate simps. 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 Like so, basically, this is like the DC version of the like, Punisher mixed with Daredevil. This one, uh, no, this one I'm gonna say. Um, um, mixed with Deadpool. Yeah. No, Deadpool's healing factor is minutes. Is apparently yeah, days. It sounds like the version because he's also violent and 
Well, the DC, the DC's the, uh, version of Deadpool heel. is very clearly Deathstroke. Yes. Well, Deadpool is the point is that they say Deadpool is yes, stolen from Deathstroke. Okay, well, no, the Midnighter is... Wade Wilson, Slade Wilson, come yeah, on. No, the, the, there's no parallel there. I think there is, okay? But you're wrong. <laughs> Are you playing with death tonight? <laughs> On tonight's show, we watch Anthony die a horrible death. <laughs> Wait, I feel like this is what they would play in the, like before your true crime drama. <laughs> <laughs> like, just, to, just to introduce, like, what happened. It's like, this is where it started. <laughs> <laughs> so, Wade, who's your character? Um, remember how we were talking about would you consider like anime in terms of like an, an underrated comic book character? Like, would an anime character be underrated or an anime series be underrated if we can go that route? Yeah, because I mean, I feel like from as a whole, a lot of people are into anime, so but I don't know if. Like, I'd say anime as an overall is underrated. I don't think so. I think that's that's very dependent on who you're talking to. But, like, if you're talking anime characters, who would you say is lesser known or underrated within that scope? Like, I feel like everybody and their mom knows who the fuck Ash Kachin is and who Naruto is and who Light from Death Note is. Like, we all know those characters. But if, if you talk about, like, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> we mostly watch. Or, like, if you, yeah. if you talk, like, Bleach. Yeah. Bleach, for example. Yeah. There's, like, there's, there's, like, there's so many characters in that that, like, you only ever really focus on the main ones, and you completely forget about all the other guys who look, like, so, like, underrated. Yeah. Like, but just just OP to the point, like, you kind of figure maybe they didn't show too much of them because they would overwhelm everyone. So it's, like, underrated with a specific purpose. Yeah, but what, I guess, but maybe the scope of underrated, I don't mean, like, underrated within their universe. <clears throat> I mean, like, so the idea People of the topic them. was to, to shine a light for our audience that might want to get into comic books but they don't want to necessarily just read like Batman or Superman because they can watch those movies and already understand those characters, but maybe have a deeper understanding to the rest of those universes. So that's why like a Constantine or a Lobo or Midnighter is, is a good one. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Oh, and then like the, the elongated man. Yeah, so that's a good one. Yeah, that's an, yeah. an elong elongated He's man. He's extremely underrated than um, comic book character. Yeah. Like just and he's, he's basically no exact exactly. So like he's he's basically Mr. Fantastic without the genius intellect. Yeah. He's, he's Mr. Way Fantastic funnier. Was, exactly, he's way he way funnier. Mr. Fantastic was just dark and broody all the time. He's like, no. I wouldn't say dark and broody, he's time. more straight. Huh. Stressed. Yeah, he's trying to cure everybody, <laughs> and then he's not <laughs> stretched. Ah. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but like in in the comic books, once he's eventually getting over his whole like, oh no, we don't want powers. What yeah. kind of bullshit that was? Yeah, you know, I I hear what and you mean by by him being dark and broody. He's definitely up there with the the Tony Starks and the and the the. Uh, Bruce Wayne's of the comic and the Ultron and the Doctor Doom. It's like there are versions of Mr. Fantastic where he goes like completely dark side and wipes everyone out. This is, is he is a scary, scary motherfucker. Read yeah. well, him and only and who dark, was the, dark, exactly man. caused uh, the Hulk to to end up on Planet Hulk. Uh, no, no, planet that Hulk? was kind of a team effort on the uh, on the Avengers side. Because uh, Loki, Loki tricked Hulk into to basically trashing Asgard, and then that fight kind of 
boiled over in onto Earth and trashed like two or three cities with him and with Hulk and Thor going at it. And then the Avengers were like, no, we, we need to do something about this. So they then uh, basically tranquilized the Hulk and sent him off into space. Mm-hmm. And then his, his spaceship veered off course and ended up on Planet Hulk, which I imagine was not called Planet Hulk when he got there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't remember what the planet was. There's a name for it. I can't remember what it is. Wasn't it Chica- wasn't it wasn't it Chicago? Yeah, isn't it the same planet yeah, as in, as in Ragnarok? Oh yeah, it's the car. Yeah. What are you yeah. doing? Behold the Sakarson. You will bring oh. freedom to our people. Yeah, there, that's a name. No, that's Dr. Doom that you just clicked on. He's famous. <laughs> Look up Evil Reed Richards. Oh, no, you're right. No, that was yeah. him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Look into Squirrel Girl. She has the power to talk to squirrels. Yeah, but she, beat, but she beat Thanos and she beat Galactus. Yep, she beat the, yes. <laughs> the most How? underrated no, power by talking to ever. them. <laughs> she beat she beat what Galactus you? by talking it out with him. <laughs> so she went full Naruto, talk no jitsu, <laughs> <laughs> and he changed his ways. Uh, no, uh, all right, so from one topic to another, <laughs> uh, I wanted to talk about if. Uh, if you've ever had, like, a, a video game experience that's, like, changed your opinion on something. Like, like experiencing something from a video game's perspective and been like, shit, maybe this opinion I have of whatever is not right or not necessarily wrong, but, like, just... Yeah, information. yeah, you have a more rounded view of it now. Oh. I don't think I've ever thought of that deeply in the game. What? Yeah. Okay. Ah. <laughs> what did you say? I said I don't think that deeply when I play games. Oh. <laughs> uh, you were just like, headshot, finished. <laughs> yeah. It's like there are there are some games that I've played lately where it gives you choices that like obviously do affect the outcome of the game, but some of these choices are just insane. Just insane. If I have to think Bioshock and Fantasy really with, like Cyberpunk. It's like that game makes you do things that you wouldn't necessarily think of doing. Yeah. And it, it, it gives it to you in the sort of like this is pretty messed up, but this is the good that will come out of it. And your, your, I'll give it a few months and then give spoilers. But Jesus Christ! I mean, what was that game called? Uh, the one where it's it's a, it's like a third person. Shoot a game in the desert in in Abu Dhabi, but there's like a massive sand, <coughs> sandstorm that happened, and your team is separated, and then you play through the game, and you're getting orders from this like main captain that's trying to like lead you to safety, and you do some horrific like war shit to get through it, and then at the end of the game it turns out he's been dead the whole time, and your character. Has PTSD. That's and, so cool. Yeah, it's insane. I can't remember what it was. I can't about. remember what it was called. Uh, um, I know the cover. Yeah, it's like, oh, fuck. But that's go through, and, uh, like and that's, that's, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Uh, it's like it's like a gravity scenario. They were like, she was in space, and she was the only one there. Thought she was talking to that guy. It's like no, 
she was the line. Spick ups the line. Me. Sorry, wait, I'm sorry. Yeah, Spick ups the line. the line. That was the game. That was fucking amazing. Like you play through the game and you do this. There's one thing where you basically burn a village of live people down to the ground. And yeah. Yes. I feel confident that the sun for us about what is happening. There's like just little blasts of audio coming from Bar and Wayne. <laughs> Our internet uh, is giving crap tonight. No. Yeah. Our internet is doing normal but, things. So obviously, the the point of of Spec Ups the Line is to make you rethink of like shit. Like I wonder how many times I was playing Call of Duty and just mindlessly killed these people, and like it makes you rethink of like your actions and what it actually means to be in those situations. Mm. And that's what I mean. Like, so, for me, more recently, playing through uh, The Last of Us Part Two, where you have quite a chunk of the game where you play through with a, a trans transgender person. And, it, I mean, you don't get to play as them, so you don't feel their shoes, but you hear a lot of their, like, day-to-day -day life stories that is very applicable to modern day just life. And it, it definitely made me feel like I used to be very like lukewarm on transgender. I was like, yes, yeah, your life, you do what you want to. But it just playing through The Last of Us Part Two, it just made me feel like they're going through a really tough time. And, and it is definitely a group of people that deserve a little bit more compassion from the rest of society. Yeah. yeah. That's what, that's what yeah. you can never like, talk from, <laughs> from games. It's like most games come out with a, like, I wouldn't even say like a specific agenda, but there's a subtle agenda in the way certain games are played to try and get you to think or feel a certain way. Yeah. And like, I've, I've noticed that more and more with certain games, like with... Um, like with Ghost of Tsunami, with um, Ghost of Tsushima, um, that one is just a very emotional game. It made you want to feel a certain way, and uh, and it was just good. And again, like um, playing um, Cyberpunk, it's the same thing. It's like there are individual stories and whatever, but like you can actually like feel like it's trying to push you towards a certain way. And after playing a while, you start feeling a specific way, like towards certain things and like so yeah like they definitely like influence like who you like or how you think or like yeah it just makes you feel different like act different like maybe something would be better yeah I agree video games are awesome mm -hmm. can you hear you stranger things no the strange games where you have to decide on things story game oh like the telltale games yeah like wolf among us and mm -hmm. oh oh life is strange yeah. life is strange those are awesome oh those ones mm. yeah, th those, I, those just are... got I just got until no space with your head uh, i'm going to give that a go at some point no it really does mess with your head <laughs> yeah no the 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 life is strange games are definitely emotional roller coasters to go on and then, but until dawn, I feel like that's different. That the the only agenda in that game is to make you shit yourself. That's it. Yeah. There's no there's no finer like oh it's 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 a metaphor for something. It's no it's a metaphor that you're gonna shit your pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Doki Doki was cool as well, and it's free. Doki Doki Literature Club. Is free on Steam. You can play it now. You'll finish it. You'll finish it in like eight hours. And you'll be scarred for life. Yeah, pretty much. You'll never trust a glitch on your laptop ever again. <laughs> well, that reminds me of the old. What was it? What Splinter Cell? Uh, Metal Gear, wasn't it? Oh yeah, we had to change controller ports. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah. I would up would go down and 
It would just mess with your buttons. <laughs> was it Psycho? Psycho Mantis. Yeah. Yes. Psycho Mantis. This is a good game. The Bioshock games have like a twist to them, but they're not, but but not like not super cerebral like. Uh, Infinity. Yeah, Infinite was more. But even Bioshock One, where then. where you find out that the big daddies are actually protectors, and the and the the girls that you've been murdering are victims themselves. Oh, this, <laughs> you're all. Well, that you are com uh, Comstock all along. Yeah. An infinite. But I feel like that's a different type of twist. That's a oh, plot twist. I didn't see that coming. Not no, like a, the whole thing about. Oh, fuck, I, sh I, I like should rethink about the way I live my infinite life. Is, <laughs> the whole thing about Infinite that, that's nice is every time you make a choice, it didn't matter. You were going to end up with the same ending. Just like real life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the whole concept is that even they said they wanted to bring an RPG where the RPG actually didn't matter. Well, they succeeded. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that I, worked. I wouldn't really say the Bioshock games are RPG. There's no, like, real skill trees or anything to them. Like, there is, technically. And the first one, they was. super shallow. Yeah. They were still considered as RPG. Yeah, it's an RPG. I think we all are. We play the roles we have. This should be on a t-shirt. One of, one of the free games on PlayStation Plus in February is Control. And I'm actually excited about it. Control's like, pretty cool. Control. control is like, cool. I'm, I'm, super, I'm actually super excited. I've got so many games now. interface tonight. Here we go. Everything is just going wonky. Wonky! Wonky! Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Foundry! <laughs> that was. Tree. That man a should be uh, arrested. <laughs> Honestly. Have you ever heard the, the new millennial word for stock? is stonk. Yes. yes. Stonks. Because, because GameStop is stonking the market. Yes. That's and basically, that's insane mad. though. That whole situation's mm. crazy where GameStop, it's basically one Reddit group that's trolling Wall Street. Is essentially what's happening there. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Did you did you hear, Barnes? Ah. Uh, so in the last whatever. week, GameStop stock went from $4 a stock to $450 a stock. What? Yeah. GameStop? <laughs> yes. What the fuck happened there? So there's a Reddit group called <gasps> Wall Street Biz, or I can't, I can't remember the Reddit group's name, but basically the whole group is just buying stock to force the price to go up to make hedge funds bankrupt. Is essentially uh, what's happening. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I don't think making uh, bankrupt is like that. What? I think that's their end goal, but I don't. I don't think making them bankrupt is their like was their complete agenda, but they're proving a point. And like what you, what we're definitely is like seeing is like now you can't get um, GameStop stock on um, on the platforms where you can trade them. So like Robinhood, yeah. you can't get game, you can't get get the stock anywhere. So this and is people... almost like it's proving that that the rich aren't like unhappy. Like to lose money to like they the whole thing is rigged at any point they can stop you from trading stock if they're yes. losing money. Yes. So you, it's almost like they're saying you can't be rich. Yes. You're not one of us. It's like not everyone can be part of us. Yeah. It's like it, this is it is fucking people, insane. People are pissed about Robin Hood, uh, stopping them from buying stock, which. It's crazy. Especially with Robin Hood's whole fucking slogan is like, oh, for the every man and, and like people that don't know how to do stocks, this, that's like the platform that you're supposed to go and do it. That's for like the everyday exactly. person. And Robin Hood. If anything, this is the best advert for Robin Hood because it shit's fucking working, bro. It's yeah. Like, 
Well done, Robin Hood. Well done. Yeah, now they're stopping it from working. It's stupid. Yeah, but fuck you, Robin Hood. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> like, even Philip DeFranco... Robin Hood Locksley goes, what the fuck did I do now? <laughs> <laughs> even Philip DeFranco was, like, pissed on... on was it this morning? No, it wasn't this morning. Yesterday. His Thursday, his Thursday show. Because he's usually quite an advocate for Robin Hood. And he usually has sponsor spots with him. And he was like, yeah, and he was like, he will not. He won't. He refuses. Which, you know, I wouldn't want to piss off Philip DeFranco. No. No. Anyway. Uh, so. The, the lesson of this one is if you want to trade stocks, watch, keep an eye on Reddit and just yes. do what they do. Exactly, a hundred percent. It's like <laughs> troll. Follow the trolls, guys. Follow the follow, trolls. Follow, follow the, the trolls. The, follow the trolls to the goal under the bridge. Yeah, and then when it goes through the swamp, you can just say hi to Barnt. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have another question for y'all. True. Yeah. When you were a child, I mean. We're, we're still child. children, but when we, were, when we were smaller children, <laughs> was there any like the random game video games that you played that like just stuck with you? I feel like for a lot of us it would be yes, like Spyro yeah. and Crash, but those have become mainstream new games now. No, Baldur's Gate, the first Baldur's Gate ever. That's the reason I got into RPGs. Okay. Baldur's Gate. I think like, the the one game that's always stuck with me was like probably the first game I played was Legend of Cage on the NES. Oh, I remember that. I did not have an NES. Just... No, I think I had an NES. Well, we had Everyone the Famicom. It's one of those like it was the same thing that Reggie yeah. special like golden yes. China bullshit. Yes, that was the best console ever. I did not so have your game, game that you're talking about. Like well, you probably did. It probably went by a different name. It was like you were a little ninja, dude, whatever. Uh, so like they used to do the same games with different names. I okay. do remember that. But you'd be, you would jump up into trees, but you could jump full, like full on Naruto. It was like, to me, it was the first Naruto game. Now that I think about it. I do remember that game. Point, I remember that. Point A to point B, <laughs> jumping from tree to tree to tree. And you can go higher and higher and higher and just like fly over everything or just go like full like Sharingan and take out as many ninjas as possible. Well, I remember power ups and getting to the end and you only had one life. One yes. life. Yes, yeah, I remember. So the only games I really truly remember playing on the NES system was the golf game. Because, you know, yeah. Mario Brothers, mm -hmm. obviously. The baseball game yeah. that was on there. And uh, uh, Popeye? No, I didn't have Popeye. Popeye was a Sega game, wasn't it? No. Yeah. Tank Wars. It came later on Sega. Uh, and then there was a, like a motocross game that you could play. Oh, uh, yeah. Super I remember that one, yeah. Yeah. And... The, the Olympic thing, wasn't it? And also the fencing, yeah. I, I played a lot of the fencing game. There was also Ice Climber. I don't remember that. Oh, yeah, I remember Ice uh, Climber. That was cool. I'm fucking, and fucking um, no, Tetris. Tetris. And Twin B. Do you remember Twin B? Oh, you're Twin B. I don't Twin remember Twin B. Fun. It's like a... Get there. It was like a spaceship thing, wasn't it? Yeah, like, you remember those, um, those Space Invader games? Yeah. So yeah. Twin B was one of the, so Twin B was one of the first ones like normal Space Invader like it's a little brick whatever these random aliens come down and you just have to shoot them in series like you get the timing like you pretty much got it. Twin B was one of the first top down games that I remember playing where it moved with um with like mountains and whatever underneath you and the guys would just come at you out of nowhere and it's also one of the first ones where you could have a second player so there'd be two players. In like for its time, the best graphics um, in like in a little shooting game. It was yeah. amazing. Twin B was cool. 
That and, and like, what like was you the see times? a lot of top-down games, like it follows the same platform. Hmm? World of what's it? Um, War Tank. Tank Wars. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Remember the tank. The one. best part of tank wars, yeah. In the, the and the best part of the tank one is you can make your own arena. It's like, I love oh, yeah. mode. so much. There was a lot of fun so, games in those years. Yeah. When gaming was cool. When the concept of uh, expansion didn't Island exist, Boy. of downloadable content yeah. didn't exist. <laughs> you can play a lot of those games now on your Switch if you have Switch Online. You get access to a whole bunch of emulators of the NES and the SNES. Yeah, you can do the same thing on your phone as well, just get a decent emulator. Yeah. That's not <laughs> that's exactly not may- that's not exactly yeah. kosher. Kosher. <laughs> that's what I may or may not have been doing. <laughs> like like so, oriental games of the teach animals to fight each other variety. <laughs> So I remember when I had a PS1, there was a a game that a friend of mine and I used to play all the time, and it was called Hugo. Uh, And it was basically like... uh, I remember that. Yeah, style-wise, it was very similar to like your... your, uh, The Hercules game that was also on PS1. It was a very similar type concept to it. We played that for fucking hours. But we never had a memory card, so we always had to start from scratch. So we we never really saw more than like the first couple of stages of the game. Mm. Oh. I remember my PS One for one Christmas. I got the, the Harry Potter game. The ah, first yes. Harry Potter game. Okay. I remember that. But I game didn't was have a memory card for my PlayStation. Oh shit! So every like, and I'll be like, I finished that game. Like, I should you not. I finished that game without a memory card. And, like, I am proud of it. That PlayStation did not live long after that. That might have been a final hurrah. Or did not leave it on? It, it died. Yeah. I, I had to. I just stayed up. There was a weekend I was like, I'm going to do this. Work up early in the morning. Like, start playing that game. Yo, it was hard. It was hard. Bro, back in the day... And we're, we're almost at the same territory now with consoles again, where on your PlayStation 1 or your PlayStation 2, that only had eight slots. That's it. That's all you could save. Because all game saves were somehow the same size. And you had eight slots. Oh, no, some games took up two slots to save. I remember. Mm. Yeah, I and, think one of the, most of the Final Fantasy is also took two slots. Yeah. And then you would, you would get into the dilemma of... Which game save file do you delete for the new game that you're playing? Because buying a memory card was way too expensive, man. Those things were crazy expensive mm-hmm. back in the day. Uh, I didn't get a memory card yes. on my PS2. What What is a game that stuck with you, my bro? Okay, other than Mario and Sonic, obviously, um, was on... <laughs> The, I think the first Xbox, I don't know, because we had the big black one and then we had the see-through one. Yeah, but I think those are both the original. I think Xbox, they're both yeah. the original. So it was Jet Set Radio. Oh, nice. And Munch's Odyssey. Oh, okay. Munch's Odyssey. Munch's Odyssey. There's a new one coming out? Yeah, I saw. Oh, it is out? I what did I say to you the other day? Oh, no, no, there was a free one on on Epic Game Store like two weeks ago. It was a remastered version. And yay, Barnt? Oh, you said my piece. Can you listen? Oh, yes, yeah, you did. You went first. Sorry, Baldur's Gate is just so boring skate, I forgot. One hour later. What the hell happened there? South African internet, that's what happened. Your internet sneezed. Mine, mine fucking shat itself. Mine went full American <laughs> vandal. Mine got hit by the turd burglar. Oh my god, dude. Have you watched it yet? What's no, that? I've only watched the first 15 minutes of it, but I've watched no, it No, you seven need times. to watch it. Alright, so Wade unintentionally discovered 
probably one of the biggest gems that exist on fucking Netflix. It is called American. It's called American Vandal, and y'all need to fucking watch this shit. It is amazing. It is an art form. It is the gold standard of all TV shows. It needs to be watched, right? So, in a nutshell, it's if you took your average true crime documentary, right? That like gritty realism and like the super seriousness of the documentary and then replace all the murder and, 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 and violence and sex with dicks being drawn on teachers' cars or someone spiking a high school's lemonade so that the entire school shits themselves at the same time. <laughs> That's what the show is about. It is fucking amazing. It has you guys have to watch it. Like hashtag brownout. Yeah, yes. Hashtag brownout. <laughs> we hashtag missed brownout. <laughs> We missed the hairballs. He always draws the testicles. <laughs> it couldn't have been him. It's just innocent. It's the mushroom. His mushroom is different to the one that all the cars. Oh my god. It is so good. You guys really need to watch American Vandal. It is fucking awesome. Okay. Alright. All right. So, uh, yeah. So, I'm going to watch, or we're going to watch from season one. And yes. take it to season two. But I really just, I really want to watch the Turd Burglar one. I really need to. <laughs> the Turd Burglar. <laughs> <That's> so good. <laughs> the Turd Burglar. <laughs> like, uh, he wanted it. Oh, it is. <laughs> uh, Alright. In case you didn't know... Thank you for sticking with us for 50 minutes of not knowing what you're watching. That's really awesome of you. Uh, <laughs> my name is Anthony Cusack, and this was Bonfire Debates. And we are uploading every Friday the podcast. And yeah, we would love to see at least 15 likes on this video. If we can hit 15 likes, Barnt will become slightly more human. <laughs> <laughs> I hopes. <laughs> and we want to hit this year for 2021. Our main goal is to hit 100 subscribers. Get the triple yeah, digits. That'll be, nice. that'll be dope. So, Let's do it. I just have, I just have one question. I mean, once you ask for it, like since we started recording this, like this evening. Yes. Um, is your phone on a tripod? And I mean, an actual plastic one, not your human. <laughs> no, it's my PC. <laughs> It's balancing on his. It's balancing on his dick. <laughs> yeah, it's on if his someone mushroom. starts playing Enya on my tripod, if starts playing yeah. Enya, would it start like bending backwards? For me? <laughs> <laughs> the QA, by the way. Uh, um, <sighs> all right, peoples. We shall see you. Bye. Follow the trolls to the goal under the bridge.